Oh, hello everyone. Welcome to Module 4. This is the last of the three search-driven modules that you'll be experiencing in this Digital Literacies course, and, and it's definitely the most challenging one as well. So you'll have three main objectives for this module. You're going to be acquiring some advanced um, and what I like to think of as academic search skills. You'll also learn how to analyze SERPs, and by now you hopefully know what a SERP is. It's that search engine results page. And then you're going to spend most of the actual module practicing your scholarly search skills and applying different tools that you've learned over the course of the last couple of modules. So let's take a look at what that content's going to look like. So as you can see, we're going to start off with your uh, standard um, discussion. Um, and then you're going to have a mission to complete for this particular module. So whereas in the previous module you had a series of shorter videos to watch. In this module you have two pretty lengthy um, lectures to watch. Uh, one is on um, search results, uh, knowing, finding better ways to get better search results, and the other one is about using Google Scholar and Google Books, which is a tremendous tool that's just underused in um, education or in the professional field as well. I want to remind you about that video notes tool that uh, was shared with you during the orientation module. It would be a pretty good idea to use that so that you're not passively viewing these lectures because you will in fact be taking a couple of quizzes after each of the seminars. So after that first seminar you'll be taking a quiz on it and then after the second time, seminar you'll also be taking a quiz on that as well. Now the fun begins at this point. Um, well I, I guess it's been fun throughout hasn't it? But uh, in this module the, the fun of this module is associated with actually practicing your search skills. So what we've done is uh, we've gone ahead and we've created a series of challenges for your consideration. These are kind of like riddles or mysteries, if you will. And the idea is for you to try to find the answer to these um, five challenges by using search engines and using all of the skills that you've learned, including uh, querying databases or using two-step um, search processes or maybe using operators and, and so forth. Now, the, the truth is that in the very next page, um, what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've actually created little think-alouds that will give you one possible way that you may have used your search skills to come to the uh, to find the answer to each one of those search challenges in the previous page. But uh, uh, of course the trick is for you to have fun and try to solve the challenges yourself before you get to the answer. So um, I highly recommend that you give it a shot and of course you, you're probably going to be tempted to just give up and take a look at what the answer is, but see how long you can stick it out. And these are very, um, they're not easy challenges, but they're not exactly the most challenging challenges I've ever come across. So um, um, I highly recommend you take a look at that. And uh, it's an easy, it's a very simple process. Each one of these challenges are, um, uh, the responses are broken down into quick little slides and I talk out loud and I give you an idea of what the thinking might be uh, about how I might use my skills to try to respond to find the answers to these uh, particular challenges. Now the thing I want to point out to you though is at the end of the answers page is this really nifty video that you ought to take a look at that will give you a good idea of uh, how it is that you might want to actually create these search challenges for your own use, uh, especially if you're a classroom teacher. Uh, there's a tremendous resource available through Google that allows you to actually use these search challenges um, in your classroom uh, if you're interested. It's actually where I got all of the challenges for you. But again, don't get to the uh, don't get to the end of the show before you watch the show. So try the challenges out yourself. Again, the challenges are located on the page called Practicing Search and they're all down over here. Take some time, read through the actual challenge itself and ask yourself what would you do if you had to find the answer to that. Now, your assignment for this module is actually also kind of fun because after you've gone through and you've um, I've been exposed to the the learner side of search challenges and uh, kind of then taken a look at what the the thinking process might be in trying to solve these search uh, search challenges your task is going to be to to um, go through and develop your own search challenge using this assignment here developing a search challenge assignment so you're going to be again creating a slide deck but I'm going to ask you to come up with your own 
uh, challenge to pose to either adults, your colleagues, or perhaps your students. And the um, last thing that I'll point out about this module is that unlike the other modules, there are actually two discussion um, uh, assignments in this module. One is at the very start and there's another one called the filter bubble discussion that happens at the end, so be wary of that. And uh, that's it for this module. Have fun!